Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making some quite complex patterns in a really, really simple manner. So, um, in the background you can see that really painted patterned paper. So this is working in my Use It Up journal. And if you have watched the video, um, a roll of Picasso, you'll actually see me creating that background and basically all it was was I had some extra paint left out on my used up journal, uh, sorry, on my palette and I just used the paintbrush to paint it in and just overlapped the colours all over my page um, until I'd used up all the paint on my palette and that's what I've done on both pages. So it was a really, really simple background to create but you'll see when I pull this stencil off it actually gives you a really complex looking background. It looks like you spent a lot of time in it. Well, in actual fact, that background was paint that I had left over and took about five minutes to stick into my journal because I really didn't care how it went down and now I've just put a um, a stencil over the top. So for this I've chosen black paint to get a really high contrast and I've used a Mandela stencil. You could use any stencil to do the same sort of thing um, but I just thought this would be quite cool um, to again give lots of repeated pattern over the two pages. So when I've finished um, stenciling over with the, the paint I've used black gesso so it's really really matte and really dark. And then I decided I wanted to, I don't know, <clears throat> I wanted to make it more complex than it actually was. I had time to kill, I wanted to do something. What I'd done had taken barely any time at, to, at all to do, so I decided that I would um, doodle over the top um, with a white paint pen. So those people who've been um, following Di Reevely, um, she's been doing lots of videos at the moment, with her um, April do a page a day in her dialogues. This is a technique that she does an awful lot. She um, stencils stuff out and then doodles over the top. Now I'm not actually really doodling over this, I'm just putting white lines um, or outlining a certain part. So the thicker parts of the stencil I'm outlining and then on all the other parts I'm just putting a white sort of highlight line on it. It takes a little while to do but you know, if you've got something playing in the background or you're watching something or listening to something in the background, it's kind of mindless work. So you can sort of be doing it, doing it and concentrating on something else. The only thing I suppose you have to be a little bit careful of is to make sure that um, if you're putting your white line on one side of a shape, make sure you put it on the same side for everything. So I think on my, um, the lines that I'm doing, I'm putting them on the left hand side so I just make sure that every time I put a line on the left hand side it always goes on the left hand side. Um, our brains are pretty good at picking up patterns and they're really really good at picking up when patterns go wrong. So if you know you go over the edge or do something like that it sort of blends into your your eye you don't really pick it up but if you put a line in the wrong place it would actually probably stand out to you so just be aware of that just be consistent with um, where you're putting your lines and so on. So once I've um, finished doing my doodling around this and playing around with it and having fun um, I decided I wanted to put some collage on this but again I wasn't really sure how to do that. And while the two pages play together quite nicely because they've got a similar technique in the background and a similar stencil over the top, um, because I've got more blue on one side and more reds on the other side, it still kind of looked like two pages. So I wanted to do something to bring both pages together. So to do that, I've got, I found this really cool image um, in a fashion magazine. It's from a Kate Spade um, I. Uh, advertisement. I just loved it because the um, background of the where the model was lying actually just really reminded me of the background that I just done in my journal so it kind of all worked together. So I decided that I would put my model in the middle of the page to help blend both those pages together and it actually worked ended up working quite well which I was surprised about. <laughs> I, I tend to surprise myself sometimes with some things because I've got an idea of how it will work and then when I do it, it's like, oh, it actually did work okay. So I'm using gel medium to glue this down. 
Um, you just need to be careful when you're gluing down magazine images. Probably brushing out gel mediums the best way to do it. If or using a glue stick would probably be better. If you use too much moisture on um, magazine images they do tend to buckle and wrinkle a little bit so just be aware that it may buckle and wrinkle it's okay in the long run but um, it may really bug you the other thing that I'm doing is just to push the image out from the background is to um, put some Stabilo oil pencil around and water activate it and that gives me a little bit of a shadow effect around my image just to push her out from the background um, if you didn't have the Stabilo oil pencil you could just water down some black acrylic paint to do that it just gives a little bit of softness it's not a harsh black line around the outside of it but it also does give that impression that she's sitting above that background so once I'd done that I decided I was going to have a quote on it and these quote stickers are from Art by Mylene and it was bold and bright illuminate the dark with your art and I thought it sort of fitted really nicely with um, what was happening in the background because it was so bright I thought I was kind of finished when I'd done that but then I decided why not take it one step further because it's me and you know why stop when you've finished when you can add something else so I decided I was going to add a border around the outside just to frame the piece a little bit and I'm quite glad I did in the end even though it was that little bit of extra work um, it did finish the page off somewhat so I'm just using um, well I would say a ruler but it's just one of the Dilusions um, journaling blocks because it's all I could find I don't know where my ruler has gone so <laughs> and I'm going around um, with a black paint pen to um, give a border I thought I could be really cheeky and use my thick um, Posca paint pen but I found the thicker pens, the very thick pen that I have, I think it's the PC7, um, is actually quite translucent no matter how hard or how much I shake it. So I've gone back to the um, tip that I usually use, which is, is I think the, the 5M um, bullet tip. And just going in and doing some black and white stripes around the edge and I found having the black and white around here um, helped tie in with the quote because that was very white on here and just gave a bit of a punch to the page um, and just finished it off somewhat tied everything together made sure that those two pages were playing nicely together and made it look like it all belonged together which I really loved the other thing I really loved about the page was the fact that just doing that stenciling over the background and having that, you know, odd painted background made it look like some fabric um, or something really highly printed when in actual fact it didn't take very long to do it all. Just to finish off the border, it just needed a thin white line around it just to um, tie everything together. So again, you don't see me using a ruler very often in my journals but I do do when I'm actually doing things like this um, using my ruler and um, moving up against it um, something I have learnt from past experience is just be really careful when you're doing um, things like this you don't press too down too hard with your paint pen because you may find it spurts out and leaks underneath your um, final image which you may not want if you've worked like I have in this and it's mostly acrylic paint and it's dried you should be able to wipe it up with a wet wipe but um, if you've worked on another surface or done watercolors or something and you suddenly have the white paint spurred out it can be really disastrous and can really bug you so this is a close-up of the final page and you can sort of see how it all ties together and it looks like a really complex background with all that pattern on it but in actual fact it was really really simple it's just a stencil and some paint in the background so I hope this inspires you to um, dive into your use it up journal and to play with some patterns and to play with some stencils to make something really cool looking thank you so much for watching until next time bye for now